what I want to focus on with you guys today is uh, it can be a little bit dry to analyze your numbers, but when you start sourcing your deals, um, and what I mean by sourcing is figuring out exactly where your deals came from, uh, you will start to notice some really uh, powerful things about your business. Um, in your business, uh, and by the way, guys, I am going to mute you. I hear somebody else that just joined us. So sorry, I will mute you, but you will be able to. Again, talk in our chat box if you want to talk with us. When you're getting deals in, we need to always figure out where these deals are coming from. You're spending a lot of money in some cases on marketing. You're spending a lot of time and energy trying to prospect and promote yourself because what is job one as a realtor? It's lead generation. So what I want to talk to you guys about today and show you is how to track your deals. And I'm going to show you what I've done this year. I'm going to give you my business plan again. I'm going to tell you what I think worked on this business plan and what did not work on my business plan uh, and what I'm getting results from and what I've not gotten results from. Um, I think you guys know my numbers pretty well at this point. Um, this year so far, I've closed a little bit over 13 million in deals, um, generated uh, nearly $300,000 in gross commissions. I split my commissions with my team. 55% uh, to myself and 45% to my team member. So of that uh, over $300,000 that I'll have generated by the end of the year, um, we've got, I'd say, another four to five large deals, decent sized deals to come in. We're probably going to end the year at 15 million on my team. Um, that'll be uh, closer to 350,000 in end income. And I'm going to share that final number with you as well. Uh, I will keep about 170,000 of that. So again, 55% of what I bring in, I keep. So uh, we're going to go over my business plan. We're going to go over my numbers, and then I'm going to share with you how to track those numbers for yourself as well. Um, the first thing is actually not the screen that we're on, but it's a different screen. I want to show you my business plan from 2017 to show you uh, what has uh, what I've worked on it worked and what I didn't do that I said I was going to, et cetera. So first of all, mission statement. I said I wanted to generate $250,000 in net income. Um, the team will have generated just my numbers um, more than that. So we hit that goal. We're excited about that goal. Profit and loss is a different statement. Um, there were some things I spent money on this year that I did not get a return on. Uh, I'm going to show you some of those. And there's other things that I didn't spend any money on that worked out awesome. So we're going to explore those as well. Uh, so this is my original business plan. Um, on my team, I do not um, take anyone else's deals. And what I mean by that is I don't uh, take credit in the MLS for other people's deals. They keep their own deals entirely. So all the numbers you see, all the leads you see are personal activities of mine that I have then shared the service of with my team. And then again, they keep 45% and I get 55%. But as far as my two team members, their own deals, they keep 100 They keep all of that. I don't try to take that or count that towards my volume. I don't believe in that system. Some of our competitors do that. And I think that's kind of bogus, but that's why this call is just for us today. Um, all right. Specific objectives of my business plan this year. I really thought I was going to do a farming campaign. I did not um, at all. So if you, when you see my deals as we source them out, you will not see a single thing that came from farming. Um, I did just start up my just uh, sold postcard campaign. You guys saw that. That just sold postcard campaign has actually been pretty successful. Um, I've gotten some new listings off of that. But um, again, that did not uh, happen until I do believe September I started that up again. And I'm just picking up the listings now. So you won't see any closed deals from that. And that's what we're talking about today is closed deals, not leads, but where I actually got my closed deals. How did I generate over $300,000 in commissions? Networking and sphere, oh, that worked out great. That is where my bread and butter is. I would love to see all of us, all of us um, doing more of that networking and sphere. Uh, I think that is absolutely uh, huge. Uh, that is going to be where you can physically go out and not spend a dollar and yet building referrals. And remember, you know, it costs a certain amount to get paid leads, which is the next category. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, it costs a certain amount to get paid leads. It does not cost anything to go out and network and remind people you're in the business and build relationships through social media. Social media has been huge. Um, on the, what I'm about to show you as far as the sourcing chart that I made, um, I break down some of exactly where on um, these referrals came from. I'm going to do a better job of that in my final 
end of year report to you and I'm going to break down the numbers as far as not only which site it came from, but how much each site made for me. And I think that'll be interesting to really even further say, okay, this is where this lead came from, but aggregate over the year, Instagram made me $30,000 or LinkedIn made me $50,000. It's going to be pretty substantial. It's been an awesome year for networking and sphere. Social media has been huge for that. Um, Item three is always a uh, controversial topic. Some people love paid leads. Some people really try to fight it. I don't care where you stand. I respect your business. Um, if you look at my LinkedIn blog, uh, I'm going to show it to you just for one second. If you look at my LinkedIn blog, you'll be reminded. I've got these cool little graphics that Travis made for me. One of the biggest graphics is this prospecting. We well, are three funnels. What are the funnels? Prospecting and farming, referral and spheres, and paid leads. Paid leads is one of the three funnels. There are some people that that is a huge part of their business. This year, I decided to do some paid leads. I said, you know what, I'm going to do some Zillow. I'm going to do some Realtor.com. And in July, um, I uh, picked up that campaign a little bit more seriously, uh, invested in five streets. So I was getting instant lead responses out. And now we are starting to close more deals from it. So as we go through the end of the year, you'll notice the second half of the year, there are some uh, Zillow, Realtor.com, um, Zillow closings. Yes, Realtor.com we just invested in. So that takes you know 90 days plus to see a return. We're just now starting to get some pending deals and, and serious um, transactions from that. So it's not been a huge part of my business but it has been a supplement to my business. And again, some people, this may be your big thing. My big thing has been networking and sphere. Websites and paid leads, though, have helped um, bridge the gap in some slow times. I am feeling confident um, that I will continue to work with both Realtor.com and Zillow. I don't use anything else other than that. Um, quarterly home buyer investor seminars, I have gotten deals off of every home buyer seminar I've done. I'm not doing enough of them. I didn't put together a 12-month marketing calendar like the core teaches us to. Um, I need to work on that for myself. I hope you will do that too. Um, every time I've done a home buyer seminar, I got deals out of it. So that is important to note. I get referrals from other exit agents in other parts of the country using LinkedIn. Uh, I go to convention. I network there. I use LinkedIn and I am on social media. That has been a part of my business year after year after year. So again, at the end of the year, not only will you see what I'm gonna show you today, but there'll be a physical dollar amount saying in 2017, Nick closed uh, number X number of deals and which netted in next dollar amount of referrals. So that's a huge part of my business. Passive income, that's a story for another day. I'll tell you, I uh, obviously love the exit residual model. Uh, it is a six-figure income already this year. I would strongly encourage you guys, if you're not already doing that, to do that. But that's not what today is about. It's not about residuals. It's about these first five categories. So you see where I did good at, and you're going to see a lot of that as we track these deals specifically in a second. Uh, and you're going to see, again, you're not going to see any, uh, you're not going to see any deals from me on uh, my farming because I did not farm, I did not do expires, and I did not do FISBO. Shame on me. So this conversation today was strategically placed, knowing you guys would want to know where I get my deals from, and I'm going to show that to you in a second, but I wanted to first say, hey, all of this didn't come together uh, without some planning, and my business plan and your business plan for 2018, we may not get everything done on that business plan, but we want to reach high, have five to seven strong categories, knowing that you're probably going to be like me and there may be an area or two like this category one, the farming, where I just fell off. I didn't do it, uh, but that's okay. That's what we're here to help you guys on. Let's get to the big stuff. Here is my exit deals report, my exit deals report. Every single one of you has this report in exitrealty.com. Every single one of you has this deals report in exitrealty.com. I'm going to go in very quickly just for a moment to show you this deals report. Um, if you guys have a team like I do and you pay your team members a portion of your commissions, the only thing that will be reflected in this deal report is your portion. So for example, um, and again, I'm gonna log into exitrealty.com in a second, but for example, this first deal, my first deal of the year, um, which by the way, these are not, uh, these are actually not in order. That was not my first deal of the year, um, but it was my first decent deal of the year. I had a slow first quarter. We'll talk about that another day. But um, th if you'll notice that, that my agent volume, that was a $160,000 deal uh, and it generated about $6,000 in commission. 
Um, only the portion that I kept. So my referral is the gross commission agent share. So the gross commission was much larger on this. I keep 55% of my deals. 45% goes to the team member that helped me service them. So again, that's why my total numbers, although we generated, I generated over $300,000 in commission, my share after I paid out my team was this amount, that gross amount, and then my agent share. So that's gross amount that came to my portion from the company and obviously I own the office, so I have a little bit higher split than most people, uh, but this is the uh, agent share portion. So just remember that when you see that, if you are on a team, if you are not on a team, you're getting 100% of your deal. Um, let's go in and log in. I'll show you exactly where to get this. And I'm also going to show you where to get your residuals. Today is not a residual call day, but I do want to show you this because I want you later on in your profit and loss statements. This is Money Mondays, um, profit and loss statements. Um, I'm going to show you where there is a line item for your residuals, and you should be tracking that every month. So this was the Exit Realty Resource Center. You guys should know about this. And then once you go into it, you click on Reports, and there's all these cool different things. The only ones that I'm really interested in, quite frankly, most of the time are my deal reports and then my residual earning reports. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So deals reports, you can track this every month in the core program. I have to show this to my core coach every month. So I need to show them all my deals. So today is the 13th, I'm gonna go all the way to today. Not pending deals, I don't care about pending deals. I care about closed deals. And this is how you're gonna get your reports so you can source your deals. So this is every single deal you've done for the year. You can literally sit there and press print. And again, this is what I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna go through line by line. It'll be a little boring, but it will be hopefully uh, eye-opening for some of you guys. Here's where I'm getting my deals from. So you can see right now, the net to me after I paid out my team so far this year uh, has been, so this is my portion of my 14, I know, it looks like I'm over 14 million now, uh, in, in sales. Uh, there is what I grossed from the office and netted from the office after I paid my team. So again, we're already over the $300,000 mark. Um, I kept 55% of that, which is 159,419. And then I took home because technically I sponsored myself. I took home uh, 149 because I the other 10,000 that you get that 10% residual, uh, I take home in a different account. So that is my number after I pay my team. So we're looking at some cool numbers there. Uh, some of you guys are doing much more business than me, but you all need to source your deals uh, because again, we need to figure out what's working, and what's not. I'm going to ask you guys if you're in coaching with me to do this from now on so that I can sit there and you will print this out and then right off to the side, just like I did, you're going to read right where that came from. What website or if it was a referral, what type of referral, social media, uh, here we go. We're going to do that in one second. Before we do, I want to show you one more report. That is your residual earnings report. Um, what I want to show you on that is you can figure out who is making you money. If you guys are getting residuals and you don't know where they're coming from and you're not thanking your recruits, shame on you. Uh, you really want to be thanking people regularly, making sure they're engaged in the training because if you are doing this right and are sponsoring a couple people a year, I only sponsor a couple people a year at this point. We've got you guys recruiting. I do those events. You guys can get most of the people, but at the end of the year, remember, we still got another month and a half you can walk away with over $100,000. So that, that's my numbers for the year. There are people in Exit that make much more than me. Um, go in there, look at those reports, it's fascinating. Okay, on to what I promised you guys. <laughs> Sorry, took a couple minutes to get there. Here's where my deals came this year. Um, when I printed this out, I printed this out October 2nd. Uh, we are gonna do this again at the end of December. And what I'm gonna also do at the end of December I'm gonna add all these up so you can see by website, uh, by referral source, exactly what the total year was. But for now, we're just gonna go through line by line. I'm gonna to explain to you where my deals came from. Uh, and you may have a totally different business model than me, and that's awesome, but I wanna show you guys that are looking to grow your business where I'm getting business from. My first deal of the year, first, at least the first one on this, uh, uh, again, this is a chronology or Redfin. Um, you have three main portals in the industry. The two big biggest ones, the by far Zillow number one, uh, well over half of the market share, uh, the space uh, on the internet uh, as far as traffic goes, it comes from Zillow. Uh, Zillow is king. You then have Realtor.com number two. 
those are paid sites. You have to pay to be on them. Redfin is number three. It's far behind the other two. However, it is number three in traffic. And guess what? Um, that is actually a competitor. Redfin is a website, but is also a competitor. It is a competing brokerage in most major markets, including ours. What you need to know about Redfin, unless you want to go work for Redfin and they have a very uh, interesting compensation model. I would not agree with it for an agent, any agent with a growing business, but their business model, part of it is the deals they don't want or the deals they can't get to quick enough or the deals they think are going to be ugly or in the service area they don't want to be in, they spit out to partner agents. I am a Redfin partner agent. So are many of you. I think there's over a dozen Redfin partner agents with us right now. Um, that is awesome. If you can get in the Redfin Partner Agent Program, I would strongly advise you to do so. You'll see quite a few Redfin closings in here. Uh, and for, on my personal page, I've been a Redfin Partner Agent since the beginning of the program. I love the program. Um, it costs you nothing to get in. However, the standards are high. You have to have a significant number of closings. You have to have a proven track record with past clients. They will, they will try to survey every single one of your past clients uh, to see if you're really a good agent after all or not. Um, and then the referral fee is 30%. That's right, 30% referral fee at closing. However, it's a consistent source of extra business. Next deal I did, big deal, nice commission. It was uh, a little bit over 12,000 total commission. I kept uh, nearly 7,000 of that. The rest went to my team member. That came from past client. So a Sphere member, uh, he was actually originally a referral from a friend, so that would be called Sphere. Uh, and then this is a repeat uh repeat closing. At the same time, that past client, uh, this one, 3242, a different past client, I'm sorry, 3242 North Ozark, the next deal down the list, that is a referral from a past client. So the first one was a past client. They originally came to me through my sphere. The second one, uh, the th third deal on this list uh, came to me. Uh, it is a past client. Before below that, we have another past client in Sphere. What you're going to notice very quickly is, is that a good agent will be constantly in contact with their past clients, offering them a market analysis, checking in with them. 3024 North Sheffield, here's what I did. I texted them and said, hey, the market's going up in your area. Uh, I'm seeing some you know, interesting prices, quite a bit more than you paid. Would you like me to come out and do a market analysis? That was over a year ago. They, they decided, though, this spring to sell. There's that deal right there. 4403 South Lake Park simply invited uh, this person to uh, my client appreciation events, kept in contact. Uh, the NAR statistics are 87% of consumers would use their agent again, less than 20%. Uh, the number is, I think, 17% now. It's slipping. Less than 17% actually use the agent again. Why? They never hear from that agent again. My next deal of the year, uh, number five was and we're going to just go in order. I don't know if you can see these numbers as well as I can. We'll, we'll clean this spreadsheet up uh, the next time we do this. Number five, 1401 Terrebelle Boulevard. That was a Redfin deal. My sixth deal of the year, 1450 North Campbell. That was a Redfin deal. 832 West Berry. That was a referral from Facebook. So that was somebody, uh, literally a friend of mine, Facebook messaged me and said, I have a referral for you. Here's the contact information. Did it in Facebook Messenger. So if you are not looking at your Facebook messages, uh, you need to get on Facebook Messenger and you need to reply in Facebook Messenger. A mistake I made, you will not see a deal on here uh, that I failed to get was that someone Facebook messaged me. I emailed them back. They didn't check their email. They, don't, they didn't work at that company anymore. I thought it would be more efficient and better to do a email back. In reality, if someone calls you, you call them back. If they text you, you text them back. Use the method of communication they did. In that case, I did it. It worked. I closed the deal. Next deal underneath, Facebook, Sphere, somebody that used a different agent when they bought 433 West Briar, when they closed and sold 433 West Briar through the power of Facebook and the fact that they thought, based on Facebook posts, that I knew what I was doing. They changed agents and used me, and I closed their deal. Next deal after that. Zillow, my first Zillow deal of the year, nice size deal. Uh, I kept, um, uh, it was, I think, a three hundred and eighty thousand dollar deal, somewhere around there. Uh, I kept five thousand out of that. Certainly, that paid for my Zillow bill uh, for quite a while. So Zillow. Next deal after that, nine hundred five was Lakeside Face, 
a good friend of mine referred a friend. Guess how much that cost me, unlike the Zillow deal? Zero. So that was awesome. Deal after that, 5320 North Sheridan. I had never met the person before. They Facebooked me. Um, they were my Facebook friend. Never met them in person. Didn't know, what, didn't know what they looked like. Didn't know where they lived. They said, Nick, I see you're good. But the only way you know that I was good is because you saw my Facebook post. Um, and they decided to list with me. I sold the unit in a week. That was a Facebook deal. Next deal after that, Instagram, 5028 North Hermitage. Another person I had never met in real life, um, only on Instagram. Uh, you had an Instagram webinar email from me earlier today. Please get on that webinar. That's really starting. A lot of people, myself including, are monetizing Instagram. There is the proof. Deal after that, 4739 West Addison. Another referral. Friend of mine, good friend, Facebook messaged me and said, meet Mike. And Mike bought 4739 North Addison. Um, that was pretty cool. I'd never met Mike before, didn't know anything about him, but I did know my friend and my friend follows me on Facebook and knows to refer me business because I talk about my referral program. Next deal after that, 4849 North Kenhor. That came to me through farming. That was an old postcard that I sent out almost two years ago. Got the listing, sold the listing. That one was done. So that was an old just sold postcard from a listing I had way, way back in the day. That worked. Next deal after that, agent referral. That 2951 Hayes, that was an agent referral. That was an agent, I think it was an exit agent, uh, in another area that referred me that deal, and I paid them a 25% referral fee. Deal after that, 5137 North Ashland, number three. That was an old farming. Uh, that was an old, uh, again, seller, uh, just sold postcard that worked. Um, the deal after that, hold on one second, because I cut off on the sheet here where I have the information in person. Um, hold on. That one was fear. I can't read my handwriting there, but that one was fear. So that is someone else that physically already knew me uh, and just used me as their realtor. Deal after that, Instagram. Um, this is someone that I did meet but that chose to use me based on Instagram. They said, well, I thought you were good based on Instagram. I do believe they were one of the people that came to my home buyer seminar that I did earlier in the year, sat through the home buyer seminar, um, and there we were. We had a deal. Um, next deal after that, that was an outbound referral. So that was, I, I do count my referrals outbound. If you guys are not sending information out, out outbound, please, please uh, think about referring business out as people leave. Uh, that person bought the bought in St. Louis was actually the same person that if you scroll up all the way to the top was 4403 South Lake Park. That is a past client and a Sphere member. So again, I also got her referral on the way out. Let's continue to scroll down. I need to move down this deal sheet here. So bear with me a moment. 2600 North Hampton. Um, that was a friend who originally knew that I was a realtor through Facebook and always keeps in touch with me on Facebook. I do see them out from time to time, so they're a Sphere member, but again, really the connection came on Facebook. Next one, LinkedIn. Um, referral from somebody else. Uh, it was a not an re agent referral, but a consumer referral. So a consumer referral uh, on LinkedIn. All right, next stop. Hold on one more second. 5200 South Ellis, that was that LinkedIn referral. Next one, 2 East Oak. To East Oak, that was a past client who I originally found on Zillow. Again, a past client who I originally found on Zillow. Um, so that was, again, Zillow working. Zillow does work. It's not as many deals as I'd like, but that was my fault with follow-up. We'll talk about that another day. We're going to have a whole conversation on funnels. Next deal up, uh, referral through Facebook. Friend of mine on Facebook, I have not seen her in over a decade. Um, referred me a deal on Facebook. Next deal after that, another referral, simply a Sphere member, past client comes to every single one of my client appreciation events, every single one of my uh, general uh, party social events. This guy is all over the place, always gives me good referrals. There's a referral from him and a significant referral. That was a half million dollar deal. I kept $6,100 out of that. Deal after that, Another referral from Sphere. It was interesting. They were referred to me and to another agent. They chose to use me based on my presence on LinkedIn. 
thought that was interesting. They chose to use me based on my presence on LinkedIn. So that was a referral from a Sphere member, but they had two options. They chose me because of what they saw on LinkedIn. So that's, again, the power of LinkedIn. Next one, just a friend. Good friend. They better use me. Um, but has been very active on social media promoting me since then. So I think there's going to be some referral closings out of that. I already am working with a member of that person's firm. Uh, this is an, an attorney in the city. Deal after that, personal sphere. Again, working that sphere. It's not enough to know people. Uh, this is another person who follows me on Facebook, follows me on LinkedIn, comes to my events, um, you know, feels connected to me. And obviously then he knows several realtors. He's actually good friends with another realtor from a competitor but chose to use me, thinks that I know what I'm doing. Um, next deal after that, past client, um, consistent past client. Uh, I do, uh, I originally got this deal, uh, that client off of Redfin. Um, and over time, that has been a very, very good client, long-term investor of mine. Next deal, personal sphere, personal friend of mine. Deal after that, 1439 South Michigan. If you've been by my door at the office, you'll see uh, for a long time, I had a just sold card up. It was kind of ugly. Uh, but 1439 South Michigan, I did farm that building regularly. Um, I kind of fell off uh, the farming uh, mailer, but this, this old mailer is still working in there. Uh, and so I closed that deal. Deal after that, uh, past client referral. Final deal uh, of that time. And again, this is only goes through October 2nd. Uh, there's been, a, I think, three or four more, uh, one of which was Zillow, one of which was Redfin, one of which was Personal Sphere. Those are going to be reflected on the next time we do this. Uh, 832 with West Roscoe, that was another Facebook referral. Uh, that was someone that just said, hey, I know you're good. Um, I wanna refer you, here's my friend's contact information. And the guy literally Facebook messaged me. A quick tip for you, for those of you guys that have paid attention this whole time, go into Facebook on your mobile app, open up the Messenger feature. So go into Facebook on your mobile app, open up the Messenger feature, and then take a make sure uh, you look at the unread requests. Again, Facebook Messenger, same way on Instagram. There are people that are not friends with you that if they message you, you have to accept the request. Um, sometimes it's spam, sometimes it's garbage, and sometimes it is a half million dollar seller, like 832 West Roscoe, that messaged me because they were referred to me by a friend on Facebook, didn't have my contact information, they just said Facebook, and Facebook messaged me. So be careful with that. You could be missing some deals. Um, the one after that, 5801 North Sheridan 9E, that was a Instagram referral. That was somebody on Instagram. I had to go back and look at this. They followed me on both of Facebook and Instagram. They actually Instagram messaged me and said, uh, I follow you. I have a referral for you. So that's my deals for the year. Here's my commitment to you guys. If you will um, stick with me as far as sourcing your own deals, I will continue to track this going forward, period, for you. I'm doing it for the core anyway. They want me to track all my deals, uh, and that's what I have to turn into them. You guys also have uh, the ability to, as do I, track your leads on the way in. So this is a deal close report. This thing that I'm about to open up and show you is called a lead tracker. You guys, all of the lead trackers, so you know what the greatness tracker is, that tracks what you do. And then the lead tracker that I'm about to show you, that tracks what you uh, that tracks the output. So in other words, when you get a lead in, to, excuse me, because I'm trying to open this up on here. When you get a lead in, you'll physically be able to open it on the lead tracker. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Uh, actually, hold on one second. I'll get this out here. Let's see. Okay. So you can't see it too well, but um, if you turn your head sideways, because I haven't downloaded this for you, this is the lead tracker I turned in uh, earlier for uh, October to core, uh, and you have to source these deals that comes in. So not deal, but actually lead. So when you get a call, a sign call, uh, a call off realtor.com or Zillow on your listings. I had a serious email I wanted you to check out on Friday night. Uh, I hope you did about making sure that your profile is set up right so you're getting your listing leads, all of them coming directly to you. So track your leads on the way in, source your deals off of the exitrealty.com site, and you will, at the end of the year, be able to track exactly how much money you made. So without adding it all up yet, which I will do for you uh, by the end of the day today and send it out to the whole office along with a link to this, 
I will show you exactly which sites made me how much money. I think that's going to be a really cool way to end this conversation today. Is uh, So look for that link. You can play this webinar over again and see where I got my deals. But we'll also just break it down uh, number-wise and say, here's where the deals came from, and here's what each site uh, made me. I think it'll be very interesting. And again, we'll do that again through the end of the year so you can see a full $15 million worth of business. If you would like to share your deals, I would love to have this as a conversation in our uh, office Facebook group. So when I send out this link and my numbers, I'm also going to invite you to share your numbers. That would be really awesome if other people would share too, because your business may be different than mine, and uh, that's okay. That's awesome. This is not a perfect business model that I have, and uh, we may be able to learn and grow from each other as always. Anybody have any questions, please put them in the comment box. I don't see any yet. Um, I will give you about 30 seconds to type that question. Otherwise, we are going to be done. Okay, I don't see any questions being typed. That's awesome. I guess that means you guys just figured out everything you needed. Uh, no, I'm always here for questions, and I think that by me sending out this chart at the end of the day, it will uh, uh, give you guys even more of an idea and maybe prompt some more discussion. So thank you guys for being on the call today, and I will see you soon.